I want you to open your Bibles in the book of Acts, chapter 1. Let's talk about power. We have been speaking about the uh, remnant, and we have been speaking about, let me see how much we can cover today. Uh, we have so much to cover. We have been speaking about uh, the remnant. Re you remember? Uh, Jesus is searching for a remnant that he can use on the end of times. We are in the end of times. That's not a secret for anybody. Jesus is coming back soon. So what's going to happen on these days? These days, things are going to be worse. If you think thing has been bad, uh, everything's going to be worse. What is happening in my country originally, Venezuela, it's, it's one sign of that. What is happening in this country and all the countries, it's just a sign that Jesus described in the Bible. So things are going to be not really good. But we need to be prepared and we need to exercise what Jesus gave to us since he was here on earth. That's why you're here today. And I can mention many things that God is doing this year. The doors that God is opening for us this year. But the main point is you are here today. You're part of this. And listen what happened. We were talking about uh, the remnant. And last week we were talking about to be mature. You remember that? Okay, what's the science to, to be a mature person? Why? Because the Lord needs a remnant of people that it, they're mature people to give them power and exercise the power. Because if someone is not ready to receive the power, he's going to mess with people, not help people. You know what I mean? And... One example of that is uh, uh, Samson. Listen, Samson received so much power, not only uh, 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 in the spirit, but physical power. But he was immature. So being immature brought him to be even on the jail, on uh, 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 being a, a, someone that people laugh about him and everything. And at the end, he recognize that the power that God gave to him was to show to the people the power of God and he destroys the, the Philistines but it took a long time for him to be a mature person are you with me now now look at this let's talk about power and let's read Acts chapter 1 and it says verse 1 the former account I made all Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Do you see that? Jesus began both to do and teach. Okay? Two things. Say with me. To do and teach. Okay? So, listen what happened now in Acts verse 8. But you shall receive power. That's the word of Jesus. Okay? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now, two key words here at the beginning is this. Jesus started to do and to teach. And now he's saying, I'm going to give you power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. Okay? That word power over there is the word dynamis in Greek. What's the meaning of that word? You remember? Power to make miracles. That's exactly the meaning of that word. The power to make miracles. Now, look at this. Many people think like the power of God is something for the past. Oh, okay. He, was, he created earth. He did everything. But now uh, it's different. 
Well, saying that is saying that God loses his power. Because he's the same. He's still the same. Now, look at this. In order for God to exercise power, he needs a body. Listen. Pay attention to this. It is illegal for any spirit to exercise power here on earth unless it's through a body. That's why when Jesus came to earth, he was God, but he decided to be a man, to stay here on earth, to get birth from a virgin, to run through all the process. And to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. And in that moment he received the power. You remember when he was baptized. The Spirit of the Lord showed up as a dove. How? How many of you were here on Monday? Okay, okay. Pay attention to this. What's the meaning of a dove? The Holy Spirit is not a dove, but listen to this. A dove is a gentle, gentle animal, okay? If a dove comes here, and the Bible said that the dove stays on him, what you need to do for the dove to stay on you? No, no. You just need to be gentle like the dove. That's basically talks about the relationship that we are supposed to have with the Holy Spirit. You see, a close relationship. You know what I mean? Now, the dove represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus said, The Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me. For what? To deliver, to make miracles, to bring sight to the blind, to, to do all the miracles that he needed to do. Now look at this. Same power, the same power, the power of the Holy Spirit that was upon Jesus. He is saying in the book of Acts, and I'm going to give to you power. Say with me, power. Oh, come on. Say it again. Okay. For what? To be my witness. Okay? To be my witness. Now, look at what Jesus did. Jesus is our example. The example that we follow. Look at what Luke says. He says, I'm going to write to you about the things that Jesus was doing and teaching. Jesus never taught anything that he didn't do before you know what I mean he called the disciples and said look at this what, what happened with this man oh he's blind okay what do you need I, I need to receive the sign okay be healed in the name of Jesus after he did the miracle he said now you're going to do it he always teach something that he was showing not just theory, not philosophy. Are you with me now? He always taught the power of God, not just talk about it. You did go, you're not going to find anything like the talkings of Jesus or the talkings of the apostle. You see? Are you with me? You read the acts of the apostles, the miracles of Jesus. You see the difference? That is power. Say with me, power. Now, if you receive power, you're supposed to exercise that power. There is no reason that we receive power and we stay here, be seated. Being a Christian is not to be seated every Sunday here. I'm telling you again, that is not to be a Christian. That is to be a religious person. And you can be a religious person with any religion. Hey. 
I've been visiting. Let me tell you this. And look at what the difference is. I took a class of world religion. In fact, I took three classes. And I am actually graduated. And I'm authorized to teach about world religion here in the United States. Because I went to all the places where people worship different things. We went to see the, the Muslims. We went to see the Buddhists. We went to see the Hare Krishnas. We went to see the uh, uh, Hindu people. We went to see a lot of places where they say they worship their gods. Okay? And listen what happened. They believe God is someone that is so far that we cannot reach him. And they believe being a believer in their own religion is just to fulfill some doctrines and that's it. But when I ask the question, okay, question. Is your God alive or he is dead? They used to laugh. <laughs> that's a good question. We don't know. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, my God is alive. <laughs> Does your God make miracles? <laughs> uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I don't know. Well, my God does miracles. Uh, and I used to do this question. What happened if you die today? Oh, that's a very philosophical question. We don't know. You can come back as a donkey or something. <laughs> Well, I'm telling you, my God said he is preparing a mansion for me in heaven. You see, religion is based on philosophy, human thinking. Said to your neighbor, we're not like that. Come on, say it again. But if you just come here every Sunday, you have been accommodating yourself to the same way. Say with me, ay, 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 now. The only difference that we have is that we have a living God that still do miracles today through every one of us. That's the difference. That's the only difference. The only difference is this. When I went to Jerusalem, I went to the empty tomb and still empty. So we can exercise the same power that brought Jesus from the dead. Are you with me now? Are you here? Come on, say something. So there is no excuse to say, Oh, Pastor, I wish I could do something like, you know, like you did last week with this young man. No, it's not a wishful thinking. It must be a reality. Oh, but you're a pastor and I'm not. It doesn't matter. The Bible says that Everyone who believes, Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Anyone who believes, anyone who believes has the power to make miracles, to speak in tongues, to raise people from the desk, from the death, and to cast out demons. Come on, say something. Say amen. Hallelujah. I don't understand, but thank you, Pastor. Let's continue. Let's do this. Why do we need the power of God? Why? As your neighbor, why do we need the power of God? Because knowing the word is not enough. We need to do the word. We need to put in practice the word. Because if we don't do that, it's just something dead. The words by itself, by itself, it's dead if we don't do nothing. This book over here is the word of God. It's the revelation of God. But it's also God speaking and giving us instructions. So what are you going to do after you receive the instructions? Just close the book and say, okay, very nice, very interesting. So, in that case, 
you are canceling the power of God. And just reduce the power of God to words. Touch it. Say, are you, do you understand that? How many of you have a Bible in your house? Okay, great. It's just a book for you or it's the manual of instructions? Okay, so you're supposed to put it in practice. It's this simple. How many of you work here? Okay, how many of you? Okay, great. How many of you receive some kind of instruction in your job? And they said, these are the instructions that you're supposed to follow here in this job. Have you ever received something like that? Okay, what happened? What do you do with that? You just close and say, ah, pff, I don't care about it. What's going to happen? <laughs> but this is the word of God that he expects us to fulfill. Wow. Wow. Are you with me? Come on, say something. Are you with me? So why do we need the power of God? We need to know the power of God. Because we need to exercise his word. Second, write down. The power of God is in you to demonstrate the reality of God in our lives. If we do not manifest the power of God in our lives, we cannot say to the world that we are a true witness. Are you with me now? Listen. There are places where I have been. When, when you say, I'm a pastor. Ah, oh, are you a pastor? Yeah. I believe in the power of God. Oh, great. Uh, that man over there, he's demon possessed. Can you, <laughs> can you catch out the demons? If I said to them, oh, okay, no, I just read the Bible, but I don't know how to do it. So, you're not a Christian then. You with me? You have to demonstrate. Okay? Oh, I'm a... I'm a specialist in, uh, you know, cars, mechanics, and everything. I know everything about engines. Okay, fix my car. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I cannot do that. <laughs> so, are you with me now? It's the same thing. If you are a son or a daughter of God, you're supposed to be exercising power. Oh, come on. Some of you are confused. You're supposed to. Be exercising power. Because he is willing and he is able to give you more power. So you can show to the world that he is God. You're supposed to be showing to the world that he is God. You see? Oh, come on, say something. You're like in shock. Why do we need power if we're just going to put it in my pocket? Okay, I got some power here. <laughs> okay, what are you going to do with that? Show it to the people. So be a witness. Third one. Are you here? The only way to demonstrate the power of God is with the supernatural. Hey, are you here? The power of God is supernatural. Okay, let's do something. Uh, can you bring, bring, bring me that one? Come on over here, son. Come on over here. Bring me that one. Okay, put it. Uh, see the people, okay. Can you leave that? Yeah, he can do that. You see, that's natural. Are you willing to do it? Do it again. Okay, do we need supernatural power to leave that? No. You see? Because he can do it in the natural. So, but if I say to you, that young man over there needs a prayer to receive complete healing for his eyes. What's that going to be? Supernatural. Oh, take him to the doctor. And the doctor's going to say, I can do nothing about it. When the doctor say, I can do nothing about it, that's when you say, okay. This is the opportunity to do something supernatural. So there is no way. Thank you, sir. There is no way to show the power of God unless you exercise the supernatural. 
Are you with me now? That's why being seated here is not exercising power of God. This is just taking instructions. Come on, you take notes. Mm -hmm. When I leave this place, I'm going to exercise the supernatural. Now let me tell you something else. In this house, there is anointing for the supernatural. You can do the same thing. H how many of you have been on the streets doing evangelism? Have you seen the supernatural power of God? Yes. Every weekend, we see miracles, signs, and wonders on the streets. Why? Because that's the way it's supposed to be. The intention of Jesus never was to put the disciples in a small room and stay there. Don't do nothing. Okay? Just come every Sunday here. <laughs> Are you with me now? Okay? Let's continue. Let's run. Let's run. Three? Four? Oh, okay. Are you with me? First of all, let's, let's uh, 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 redo it again. We need the power of God because we need to exercise the power. We need to show the reality of God. And we need to be a, a demonstrator of the supernatural power. Now, what is God's purpose? What's the purpose for giving us his power? He is God. But he's trying to give us his power. Let me give you a word, very interesting, that I heard many years ago from Dr. Miles Monroe. This word is colonization. Have you heard that word before? Okay, write it down. What's the meaning of colonization? We are coming from heaven to establish the kingdom of God here on earth. The only way to colonize something is by power. Who is in charge? Who is trying to take control and command everything right now on earth? The devil. So in order to colonize your territory, you need to cast out the devil. That's supernatural. And the only way to do it is with the power of God. That's why Jesus came and he said, look at this. When Jesus came to her, he said, repent. The kingdom of God is at him. He always came to earth saying, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. He came to establish the kingdom of God by power. That's why Jesus came to say to the devil, get out, leave them. Are you with me? The only way to do that is with power. Okay? So, let me read. What's the purpose for God to give us power first? So our faith needs to be founded not in human philosophy, but in the power of God. 1 Corinthians 2.4. 1 Corinthians 2.4. Look at what the Apostle Paul says. In my speech, in my preaching, we're not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power say with me power you see what's the purpose the purpose of God giving us power is that we walk in power not in human philosophy religion is human philosophy listen to this the Apostle Paul, if we put the Apostle Paul in our days, I mean, in, in, in the different levels of education, the Apostle Paul could have a PhD. Do you know that? He was very well educated. Very well. In fact, he went to the best uh, uh, universities over there. Not that universities exist in that time. But the teachers that he had. And he said, I am very well educated. But none of that make miracles. <laughs> I decided to leave that for the power of God. And that's why he's saying, I came here not with human words. But with demonstration 
of the power of God. The power of his Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Say something. Uh, or, 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 are you sleeping? <laughs> say with me power. Come on, come on. I feel so much power. <laughs> say again. Look at this. If the apostle Paul didn't exercise power, he was not credible. You're just like the others. You know how many people used to claim that they were, they got the truth? Okay, show me the truth with the power. The only way that Moses could show to the Pharaoh that God has power is showing to him that he has power. You see? The only way today to show to the world that God is alive and he's powerful is when you exercise power. Because today, unbelief, it's something normal. People say, I don't believe in God. You know, that's, that's a problem. Okay? Let me show you what you say that it's a problem. I'm going to pray for you right now and you will receive the power of God. Are you with me? Let's run. Let's run. What time is it? Wow. Let's run. Second, what's the purpose for God to give us power? To establish the kingdom by force with the power of his Holy Spirit. By force. Let me read Zechariah 4.6. Zechariah's For six said, so he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What he was saying basically is this. Zechariah was talking to Zerubbabel and to Joshua. The governor and the main priest. And he was saying, it's not in your strength. It's not in your might. It's not in your own power. It's by my power. Let me tell you something. You have been mistakenly doing things on your own life. Fighting in your own power and not in the power of God. Hey! Come on, sweet. When you understand the power of God, you don't fight your own battle in your own strength, but in the power of God, presented that to God. Father, in the name of our almighty God, I fight this battle with your power, not in my own strength. You see the difference? You have problems in your family? Pray with the power that you receive from God. You have problems in your job? Pray. You have problems in your finances? Pray with the power of God. You have problems with your children? Pray in the power of God. You have sickness or anything that is preventing you to live your life abundantly? Fight in the power of God. The problem is that we have the tendency to find our own strength. That's why you feel weak real soon. <laughs> oh, come on. You're, you're in shock or what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which number we go? Okay, three. What's the purpose of God giving us power? To establish the order of God. God has an order here on earth. If you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. Four, let's run. To confront and bind and cast out demons from your own territory. Many people say, God, why I am suffering of this oppression, depression, sickness, misery, everything. And God said to you, I already gave you the power. Come on, cast out that, those demons. He already gave us the power to do it. But we're still 
crying. Oh God, I'm suffering. <laughs> the demon's over there, and you with the power in your hands, but you don't exercise it. Or you're waiting for someone. Oh, I wish the pastor can be here to pray for me. You can do it. That's why you've been trained here. So you can go and do it by yourself. D-I-Y. <laughs> do it yourself with the power of God. Are you with me? Many of you, it looks like you're in shock or something. Are you, are you here? Okay. Fifth. And this is the last one. We're going to end here. What's the purpose? What's the purpose of God giving us power? To confirm that we are a legitimate witness of Jesus Christ. Are you a witness of Jesus? Okay. Have you been exercising power? Do you understand what we are talking about? Jonas, do you understand? Many people do not realize the amount of power that God has given to us. And the main purpose of the devil is to keep you seated over there, not understanding the power of God. Even though if you know the word, if you know the Bible, you can know the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelations. You can memorize the whole Bible. But if you just sit over there and don't do anything, it's just words. You see? That's why you see people that are here for a few days and they're doing miracles. They don't have a lot of knowledge, but they understand the power of God. You see what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? So what are we going to do in this year, 2018? I believe this is the year of the harvest. The great harvest. But the only thing that God needs is people to be willing To reap the harvest with the power of God. Get on your feet. Listen to this. The only way to exercise power is just doing it. If you need to nail a nail, how are you going to do it? Hey, what are you doing? Keep it. How do you do it? You need to use power. What do you need to do? You got a hammer. Put the nail on it. Bam! You see? Read the instructions. Hold the nail in your hand. Take the hammer. And hit the nail on the head. Okay. I understood already. If you don't do it, you're never going to put the nail on it. You see? It's the same thing. You have been empowered to make miracles. I don't want you to come here every Sunday just to hear. Oh, very interesting. Oh, wow. Hmm. I learned something new today. Wow. Mm-hmm. No, you need to bring someone here that you pray for them on the streets. It's hard? No, it's not hard. You know what's the hardest part here? That you be willing to do it. The problem is not the people. The problem is this. Come on over here, Marcus. The problem is that you approach people and you, you say in your mind, Okay, oh, he's going to reject me. Oh, he, he, he's going to say something to me. Oh, excuse me. You, you don't want to come to church, right? You don't want to? Okay, okay thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, God. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're never going to find anybody like that. 
You need to speak with authority. The Lord said to me that I came here to say, you are a man of God. You were chosen to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Just like that. He's going to be shocked. Like, okay, okay. What do I do? Repeat after me, Father. In the name of Jesus, I recognize that I am a sinner. He's going to be in shock. What, what, what happened? You're a new believer now. <laughs> you took him by force. If you ask him, hey, uh, excuse me, I'm Christian. And I want to invite you to a, uh, a meeting, a good people there. Do you want to come? That's going to be the answer. Because that's humanly approaching. You see? You're trying to convince people in your own strength. Nothing is going to happen. You see? Because he's going to say in his mind, Ah, oh, this is another crazy group. But when you do not talk, you see the difference? Jesus has started to do and teach. When you do something different. Hey, I noticed that you have like pain here. And you're, what, what happened? Okay, let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare healing right now. In Jesus' name, receive it now. Receive it. Say with me, I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hand. How do you feel now? How do you feel? it? Better. Wow. What a blessing. Give me a hug. Thanks God. He's feeling better. You do something. You know, I'm just in my way to a very good place. Let's come with me a few moments. Okay, great. Come with me. You do and you teach. You see the difference? The problem is people is tired about religion. They are tired. Are you one of those groups? Yeah, they want my money. Mm. It's time to be empowered and to show to the world who God is. Speak less, do more. That's what Jesus used to do. Jesus just said, be healed. Get up. Run. Are you with me? Leave your hands. Say with me, Father. Say louder, Father. Right now, I understand my responsibility carrying your power. Now, I declare your power to change my life. In Jesus' name, I declare that I am a sinner. I repent myself from my sins. And I declare now that I am a true witness empowered by your power by the power of your Holy Spirit take me to the streets to show to the world that Jesus is alive in Jesus name amen amen and amen can you shout amen listen I want